All right, so let's look at an example. So we've, we've so far, we've, we've discussed the fact that when we, when we describe a function being increasing or decreasing, we mean we're talking about whether the y values increase or decrease as we move from left to right. Um, using the mean value theorem, we tie these properties into whether the derivative is positive or negative, right? Do you have a positive slope? in which case you're dealing with an increasing function, or a negative slope, in which case you're dealing with a decreasing function. Okay? Uh, so what we do if we want to figure out the intervals on which a function is increasing or decreasing is we, we look at the derivative. Okay? So we compute f prime. We have 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Okay? And we want to know where this quadratic is positive or negative, which means we should try to factor. Right? Um, if you can't come up with the roots right away, you might try um, quadratic formula. But with a little bit of, of educated guessing, we can work this one out. Right? Um, x coefficients have to be 3 and 1. The constant coefficients have to be 1 and 1. Uh, we try to match the 2 in the middle, plus 2. So if we do 3 times plus 1, that's a plus 3 minus 1. That works out. OK? All right. So we can get a couple of things from this. We get that f prime of x equals 0 if x equals one third, or x is equal to minus one. All right. Now, if you recall your intermediate value theorem, the derivative is polynomial. It's continuous, continuous everywhere, right? So there's nowhere that this derivative is undefined or even discontinuous, right? It's a polynomial function, and and so we know that the only places where this function can transition from being negative to positive or back to negative are at the zeros, right? If the function switches sign, if the derivative switches sign from negative to positive or positive to negative, it has to do so at a zero. We have our two zeros, so we have the only two places where the function can possibly change sign. Um, so what we do is we give ourselves a little number line, okay? Um, so people will refer to these as sign diagrams, sign charts. Um, I like sign diagram. So what we do is we mark off our zeros. Okay? So there are two places where the derivative is 0, at 1 and at 1 third. Okay? Now we know that in these three intervals that result, once we mark those off, we know that the function has to have a constant sign on each of these intervals, right? because we know the zeros are the only places where you can have a sign change. So people have different strategies for filling out the signs in each of these intervals. One strategy is to choose test values, right? We know that 1 is over here, 0 is in here, minus 2 is over here. And we plug those numbers into our derivative, we see what we get. Um, once you get a bit of practice with this, you can actually get pretty quick with these. And you can realize that, OK, if I'm picking a number out here, um, Let's take 1, for example, right? I don't actually need to work out what f prime of 1 is. I just need to work out the sign. So I say, OK, if I plug in 1, is this factor going to be positive or negative? Positive, right? 3 minus 1 is 2. It's positive. Uh, if I put 1 in here, positive or negative? 1 plus 1 is 2. It's positive, right? Positive times a positive is positive. So I know that out here, I have positive function, right? So I'm putting this plus sign to stand for f prime of x is bigger than 0. All right. Between minus 1 and a third, we can try something like 0. 0 plus 1 is positive. 0 minus 1 is negative. Negative times a positive is negative, right? So f prime of x is less than 0, OK? What if I go something less than minus 1? OK, try minus 2. Well, minus 6 minus 1, that's definitely negative. Minus 2 plus 1 minus 1, negative, right? Negative times negative. It's going to be positive. 
Okay, so out here, positive again. So f prime of x bigger than zero, right? So you mark off those signs, right? Positive, negative, positive. And you say, okay, and I have this you know, theorem, we just did this theorem that says, if, if f prime is bigger than zero, if f prime is positive, I have an increasing function. If f prime is negative, I have a decreasing function. If f prime is positive, I have an increasing function, right? So I know I'm going up, then down, then up again, okay? So that's the idea. Um, once you get some practice with these sign diagrams, you can fill these out really quickly. You probably don't even end up bothering with test values, right? Here you might just say, hey, it's a quadratic, it's opening up. So I know that it's got to go plus minus plus because that's what it looks like whenever you have a quadratic that's opening up with two roots, right? Um, some people get good at just saying, well, at each of these zeros, I have a sign change or I don't, and you get good at deciding whether or not you have a sign change at each zero, and you just fill out the signs going across. People can do these pretty fast. Um, all right, now, we're not quite done, right? Because what was, the, uh, what was the question asking originally? Oh, find the intervals, okay? So, what do we conclude? We can conclude that f is Increasing on, well, everywhere less than minus 1, so from minus infinity to minus 1, and everywhere after a third, so from 1 third to infinity, and it's decreasing on the interval from minus 1 to 1 third. Okay? Again, um, I think open intervals are probably the more appropriate answer here. Um, if you put closed intervals, you're probably not going to be docked marks on a problem like this. 